the accepted wisdom in musical marketing, and it makes complete sense, is that you need to pretty much stick to one genre, one musical style. This makes it far easier to market, to target yourself at particular radio shows, magazines, blogs, playlists. If you make hip hop, but you also have other musical interests, if you were to suddenly come out with a Mexican grindcore tune, it's going to do two things. It's going to confuse your fans. You might lose people who are otherwise kind of following you, but it also confuses the algorithms that the various online sites use to decide where to place your tracks and who to put them in front of. Being genre fluid is not necessarily a good thing from a marketing perspective, and I get that. However, the nature of what we do musically is that we explore any kind of music that we hear and like and we think might work with what we've done previously and we bring those influences in and we work them and we make them part of what we are. Now does this cause problems? Does it contradict that music business accepted wisdom that you don't mix genres? And I have a couple of thoughts on that. If you look at some of the greatest artists in musical history, and I'm thinking people like Led Zeppelin, miles away from what we do, but I think an example of what I'm getting at. If you were to say what genre is Led Zeppelin, somebody would probably come out with heavy rock or hard rock. But the fact is, they did tracks that range from dirty delta blues to heavy rock to rock and roll to acoustic folk very up tempo very powerful tracks through to some quite gentle acoustic ballads strictly speaking these tracks are all in different genres and yet they're all treated as being part of the same thing because i think what people were following when you followed a band like led zeppelin was not the genre, you are following the artist and you were interested in what the artist was interested in and if they wandered off and experimented into a particular area you went with them and they possibly opened up your ears to new styles that you might not otherwise have listened to. Another recent development, strangely enough, has been from Spotify. We've always found it to be an absolute pain when presenting tracks to Spotify to get on one of their playlists, which has 100% failed, I have to say. When you present a track for a Spotify playlist consideration, you can choose two or three genres, and there are some options on subgenres, and it's a very, very weird list that doesn't possibly match anything we do, but that's the way it has tended to work. And that's fine if you make hip-hop or country or heavy rock or something like that. You can just tick those boxes. With some of our tracks, there is literally no option on their list that fits the particular track we're putting forward. However, people from Spotify have been saying some very interesting things just lately. They are the ones who are saying that genre is becoming less and less important. They are far more interested in mood and vibe and feel. So when you present to Spotify, you can actually select from a, a bunch of mood options. And of course, you've got the description where you can just describe your music. So there are big playlists out there that are about happy summer's days or when you're sad or, or when you're celebrating something. So this might actually, as we go forward, give some more options for genre-defying, genre-fluid music like ours. A lot of our fans who've been following us for years know us from non-Western music-influenced electronica with roots in the Middle East or the South Asian subcontinent. 
And we don't want to lose that, and we don't want to lose those followers. We still love that stuff. More recently, though, we've been discovering Northern European traditions, the kind of so-called Viking music, which isn't really Viking at all, but hey, dark folk, neo-folk, um, a little bit of my own Irish background as well, and bringing some of that in. I think we're also a bit less afraid of touching on our rock roots now than we ever were before. Certainly in the 90s when you started making dance music, guitars were not there. It was very much a guitars were of the past. And I think we're getting a little bit more open to the idea of bringing in some of our heavy rock and prog rock roots, although we are not going to make rock music, it's just the influence will be there. We hope that we can bring people with us as we explore these new and old areas. And that if the industry really is changing, as the Spotify people claim, to be more about mood and vibe and less about genre labels, that probably works in our favour. If we can figure out how to use that correctly and capitalise on it and focus on it and point our marketing in the right direction. I think it's probably good for a lot of artists who find it hard to be pigeonholed. It's good that there might be just options to just be what they are and not worry about these stupid music industry labels. And who knows, maybe a hip hop fan might well be interested in a little bit of Mexican grindcore if it's presented in the right way and put in the right context and maybe has a little bit of a hip hop feel to it. Who knows? That's what music's about, experimenting and coming up with new innovative ideas. Let us know if you think I'm talking crap or if you agree with any of it, leave some comments. Thanks very much.